Hello everybody and welcome to another audiobook. This is the third story in Friendly Face and I'm super duper super excited for this one. Uh, <laughs> I add an extra super on there just for good measure because this one is called Together Forever and this is the one I've been excited about the most uh, like coming up to the release of this book. And I am, I'm just so excited because of just the name. Like, Together Forever, it sounds like a horror story. So, hopefully this is going to be good. Uh, again, I'm reacting to this as I'm reading it. So, uh, I'm going to be adding my thoughts and stuff. But hey, it's a free audiobook, so you shouldn't mind. <laughs> right, let's get straight into this, I think. Uh, oh, that was actually the first two words. <laughs> I think a queen should have servants, Jessica said as she glided to her locker and struck a pose. She examined her bright red nails. I shouldn't be expected to do things like open lockers, especially when these old locks get stuck all the time. Remember last week when I chipped a nail right after I had that zebra polish on? Oh, remember Brittany? How could I not? It was tragic. Brittany stared at her own nails, painted purple with gold swirls. She glowered at the combination look lock on Jessica's locker. I really think the principal should do something about getting, like, maintenance to look at your luck, especially now that you've been named homecoming queen. I know, right? Royalty should come with privileges, for sure. Brittany agreed as she opened her own locker next to Jessica's. Jessica scanned the long grey linoleum floored hallway to see who was looking at her and her best friend. Kids getting ready to go to class packed in tight around the scarred Ramaroon lockers, sh ch chattering and shouting. Lockers slammed. Athletic shoes squeaked on the floor. The air was filled with energy and, p and familiar smells. The pine-scented cleaners the janitorial staff had used at night, the cooking aromas drifting down the hall from the cafeteria staff's early preparations, and the occasional rank fart that some crude boy, it had to be a boy, let loose. Everyone was busy, but that didn't mean they were oblivious. They still noticed Jessica and Brittany. Jessica knew that she and Brittany were the prettiest girls in their class, arguably in the entire school, which was why they were voted homecoming queen and homecoming princess, even though they were just sophomores. It had been a delicious controversy when the votes came in. The two seniors claimed the vote was, vic the vote was rigged. Since there was no way they couldn't have been the ones chosen, they demanded a recount which came out in Jessica's and Brittany's favour. They were the royalty. There was no arguing about it. These guys are honestly the worst human beings. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, I don't know if I can stand them already. Uh, <clears throat> Since then... Jessica and Brittany had been getting more attention than was usual for them. Take this morning, for instance. Right now, several freshman girls stared at them from across the hall. Two nerdy guys practically drooled over them as they loped by. Jessica never tired of watching her classmates ogle her and, and Brittany. Uh, they all did, boys and girls. Even the teachers stared. Who wouldn't stare? Jessica and Brittany had it all. The shiny blonde hair, the, blig, the big blue eyes, the high cheekbones, the pert noses, the full lips, the perfect petite figures, and the most up-to-date fashions and makeup to complement all their natural superiority. They, wore, uh, they were peacocks in a sea of pigeons. Everybody loved to admire their awesome feathers. And they were looking particularly dope today. Over the weekend, they'd hit the sales at the, at the mall and had gotten an amazing deal on the Forks suede mini skirts they wore. The skirts weren't identical. Of course, that would be the peak of lame. Jessica's tawny skirt buttoned up at the front. Brittany's chocolate brown skirt had two diagonal zippers that formed a V at the front. That's, that's not very cool. Uh, Jessica wore her skirt with a cream-coloured silk tank and Brittany wore hers with a flouncy chocolate and black geometric patterned blouse. I like that though. Uh, Jessica had been delighted to discover her new shirt matched a lit pair of lace-up booties, which made her leg look amazing. Brittany wore black platforms today. They were equally rad. Hey babe. Jessica turned and flashed her perfect white teeth at her boyfriend, Derek, a senior, the varsity football quarterback. She casually put her hand over her mouth and blew into her palm to check her breath, which was fine, of course. She lifted her cheek for a kiss. 
Derek's leather letterman jacket crackled as he threw his arm around Jessica. He brushed his lips against her smooth skin. <laughs> you smell great. <laughs> oh, I hate this story. I hate it. She giggled and punched him in the upper arm. He flexed his muscles and grinned at her. Did you... Oh, sorry. Did you get your suit yet for the dance? She asked him. She'd given him explicit instructions for the type of suit to buy, colour, style and cut. She knew what would be stellar on him. If he did as she told him, they'd look amazing together on Saturday night. Not yet. <laughs> Jessica leaned away from Derek and glared at him. The dance is only three... Wait, never mind. The dance is only three days away, Derek. You won't be able to get that suit fitted at that fast. I thought you were going to go get it last week. Derek rolled his eyes. It's not like I've been doing nothing, Jess. Coach has us practicing more for the homecoming game, which is only two days away, you know. Jessica stepped out from under his arm. She squinted at him. You don't practice all the time. You could have gotten your suit. Derek shrugged. I'll go get something this evening. It won't be custom, Jessica complained. She pushed out her lips in what she knew was a pretty pout. Yo, Derek, Jessica, one of their friends shouted. Jessica turned to flutter her fingers at Chase, the school's star running back. He was trotting past, cradling his history book like a football. She watched his long, curly hair fly out behind him as he went, and then she shifted her gaze to his butt. What? <laughs> he had a great butt, even better than Derek's. Oh, I don't want to read this. <laughs> his face wasn't much. His features were too flat to be called handsome or even cute. But the butt and the curly surfer hair made up for that. Plus, he had the whole star ru running back thing going for him. This had earned him the privilege of dating Stephanie, one of the Rarsity cheerleaders and Jessica's second best friend. A distant second best. The truth was that even though Jessica was friends with everyone in the school who was worth being friends with, a certain appearance and status was required to be entitled to her attentions, she'd never got to be close, uh, as close to anyone as she was close to Brittany, who was her BFF in a truer sense of the word. Was BFF a word? It's, a, uh, it's an acronym. Jessica brushed aside the question. Who knew? Who cared? Uh, I know and I care. <laughs> Gotta go, babe, Derek said. He put a rough index fingertip under her chin and lifted her face so it looked up at his. She studied Derek's dark, handsome features with his beautiful hair, intense brown eyes and umber brown skin. Derek had the kind of good looks that made Jessica's legs go weak. And of course, Derek knew his powers every bit as much as she knew her own. He and his six feet, two inches two separate measurements, uh, of sculpted muscle, strutted through the school's hallways like the king he was. They made an incredibly beautiful couple. Derek gave her a soft kick, kiss on the lips. His breath smelled like the winter green gum he was always chewing. She loved the smell. It went perfectly with the icy scented cologne he wore now, which she bought for his birthday the month before. She knew he hadn't been excited about that, but he'd loved the leather steering wheel cover she'd also give him. One present he wanted, one present he needed. She knew how to be diplomatic. Even though she loved the smell, the gum did bug her. She didn't think all that sugar was good for him. You're going to get cavities, you know, and your teeth are going to like, like fall out when you get old, she always told him. He usually ignored her. One day, though, he responded, Yeah, and by then, we'll both be all wrinkled, and we'll have been together so long we'll probably hate each other. So, it won't matter. I don't know why he, why he went British there. Okay, whatever. She hadn't been sure what to make of that. Did that mean he planned to marry her? Did she want him to? She didn't think so. Jessica and Brittany had plans for the future that didn't include Derek or Brittany's boyfriend Roman, also a senior and also a football player, the star wide receiver. Admittedly, dating Derek and Roma was great for their status and having senior boyfriends made their lives super convenient. The boys could drive them wherever they wanted to go in the kick-ass convertibles without parental supervision. But that didn't mean Jessica and Brittany had met the loves of their lives. Neither of them had those illusions. Derek and Roman would likely dump them when they went off to college anyway, but that wasn't a problem. They would get new boyfriends with a snap of their fingers. Derek started to saunter away. 
Jessica caught his arm. Derek, could you please open my locker for me? Derek raised a thick eyebrow and then shrugged and reached out to quickly spin her lock through the combination she knew he'd memorised. The lock clicked open and he pulled it off. Then he yanked on the lock. It jammed, as usual. He gave it a slap with the palm of his hand, then gripped it with his index finger and thumb and jiggled it. Finally, it gave way. My hero. Derek <laughs> rolled his eyes. Maintenance shook fist that, he said. Like, I just said that, right? Brittany said. She was standing in front of her own open locker, touching up her makeup in the mirror hanging on the inside of the door. See you at lunch, babe. Oh, damn it. There's too many people. See you at lunch, babe, Derek said to Jessica. Bye, Brit, he strode away. Jessica watched Brittany swirl her powder brush across her forehead. She was a whiz with makeup. She could make even the angriest of red pimples appear, uh, disappear with a little foundation and powder. Not that she had any acne. Like Jessica, Brittany had flawless skin, but she could make the prettiest skin look even prettier. It was a gift. Just as Jessica started to look into her own locker, Brittany's locker door flew shut. Brittany jumped back just in time to avoid being slapped by its sharp metal edge. What the? Brittany began. I'm so sorry, a chirpy voice said. <laughs> I don't know if I should do these stupid accents, whatever. I'm going with it. Jessica crossed her arms and attempted to skewer the owner of the voice with her best laser-like you are a pond scum look. Mindy, the chirper, didn't even notice. Instead, she laughed. She laughed, the moron. Cindy and I were thumb wrestling and my hands slipped into the door, she said, grinning. I went out of bounds, she snorted. So did the girl standing next to her, Cindy. Jessica curled her lips and shook her head. Cindy and I were thumb wrestling. She, oh sorry, Cindy and I were thumb wrestling, she mimicked Mindy's cartoonish voice. In her smooth, in her normal smooth voice, Jessica said, "Thumb wrestling." She looked at Brittany, who was reopening her locker in a huff. When she got it open, she threw the door back so it slammed into the frame of the neighbouring locker, Mindy's. It slammed so hard that it almost closed itself again. Brittany caught it. "You two shouldn't even like have lockers in the section," Brittany complained. "You're eighth graders." Mindy smiled and shrugged. "It's not our fault the junior high school flooded." I'm not so sure about that, Brittany said. You two are so stupid. Like, you probably, like, tried to flush something down the toilet and backed up the sewer. <laughs> Jessica had to speak up. No, Brittany, she said. They are the things that should be flushed down the toilet. She shifted her attention to Mindy and her friend. You belong in the sewers, like little sewer rats. She lifted her hands to the sides of her nose and wiggled her fingers while she lifted her lip to expose her upper teeth. She made little squeaky sounds like a rat and looked at Mindy hard, really hard. Any normal person on the receiving end of Jessica's flinty look would be shrinking into a little ball of shame. Jessica, Jessica's dirty looks were epic. Mindy didn't even flinch. It annoyed Jessica to no end that neither Mindy nor her look-alike friend Cindy were the least bit intimidated by Jessica or Brittany. And seriously, how too cutesy were those names, Mindy and Cindy? They sounded like the names of poodles or baby dolls, the kind that spoke when you pulled their cords. Hi, my name is, Cid my name is Mindy, pull my cord again and I'll burp on you. Jessica smiled, remembering how Brittany had laughed her head off when Jessica had said this to her the week before. Brittany agreed that Cindy and Mindy were good names for dolls and on dogs. They weren't good names for real girls. They didn't look like real girls either, both freckled and red-headed. Mindy and Cindy were small for their 13 years. Both were kind of cute, Jessica supposed, in a ferret or hedgehog sort of way, but she hated how Mindy's cheeks puffed out and how Cindy's eyes bulged. Not to mention their childlike clothes. They both tended to favour things. Oh, sorry, they both tended to favour things like gingham and polka dots and animal prints, and little floral patterns. It made them look like total babies. It was bad enough that the high school students had to put up with these kids in their building because of the reconstruction happening at the junior high. It was worse when those junior high kids looked around and acted like, uh, sorry, those junior high ki eh, those junior high kids looked and acted like grade school kids. I apologise for messing up multiple times in this. It happens to the best of us. Uh, 
Mindy tilted her head and smiled at Jessica. Jessica narrowed her eyes and lifted her chin to make it clear she was condemning Mindy to less than status. Mindy didn't seem to care. That was really cute, she said. What was? Jessica said. Mindy lifted her hands at either side of her nose and did the same rat impression Jessica had just done. Are you, like, uh, dissing her? Brittany asked, stepping slightly in front of Jessica as if she was going to defend her physically instead of just verbally. Mindy lifted her eyebrows. Dissing? She shook her head. No, I don't diss. I think it's rude, she shrugged. I was being serious. It was cute, what she did. She looked at Cindy. Wasn't it Cindy? Cindy nodded her head several times. Her springy curls bounced. The, girl, the curls were the way Jessica was able to tell the girls apart. Mindy's hair was straight and it hung ju just below her narrow shoulder blades. It was, Ch Cindy said. I have a gerbil at home and she looks a lot like that when she's eating a slice of cucumber. She smiled. Her name is Aphrodite and she's really cute, isn't she Mindy? Mindy nodded. She really is. See, it was a compliment, not a diss. Brittany looked at Mindy sideways and snorted. Cindy sneezed, and she didn't even cover her nose. Snot sprayed everywhere. Jessica and Brittany stepped back in unison. Get your germs away from us, Jessica snapped. Cindy sniffled and pulled the tissue from her pocket. I don't have a cold, she said. Cold came out code. It's allergies. I'm allergic to dust. Before Jessica could respond to that, Mindy leaned toward Brittany. I really am sorry. I accidentally slammed your locker door. I'll be more careful from now on. As if, Brittany said. Mindy flashed a big smile at Brittany and Jessica. Bye, Cindy said. Have a good day. She sneezed again. Jessica wrinkled her own nose. The two eighth graders, both wearing full skirted short dresses, hurried away. Jessica shook her head in awe. She reached into her locker and pulled a towel from her gym bag. She wiped down her arms, the front of her locker, and the front of Brittany's locker. When she was done, Brittany handed her a disinfecting wipe. Brilliant, Jessica said, wiping her hands. Thanks. She sneezes on my locker all the time, Brittany said. I don't care if it's allergies, it's grody. I know, right? Jessica agreed. Jessica looked down the hall and watched the little redheads go around the corner. How did they take themselves seriously? Mindy sounded like a chipmunk, with her words all clumped together, and a slight ch attached to all of her s sounds. But Cindy's voice was so high-pitched, she sounded like a dolphin. Even her sneezes were squeaky. I, like, totally hate those two, Brittany said. They're beyond Niki. If Uncle and Niki had a baby, it would still have more chill than those two, Jessica agreed. Brittany laughed. She looked at the gold watch dangling from her slender white wrist. Jess, we need to hurry. We'll be late for history. Jessica quickly reached into her locker and grabbed her history textbook. I'm ready, she said. Jessica and Brittany slammed their lockers in unison and s s I don't know how to pronounce that word, sashayed down the fast emptying hall. They were hurrying because they kn both knew anyone who was late for history had to give an oral report on an assigned topic the next day, but they had to hurry without looking like they were hurrying. Royalty didn't hurry. It was all about poise and grace. Jessica and Brittany had both. This was what took their looks over the top. They weren't just beautiful, they had presence. Jessica and Brittany maintained that presence at all times, even when they had to rush to class. Jessica and Brittany made it to history with four seconds to spare, but now they were sweeping into the school cafeteria ten minutes late. The huge room was packed. The buzz of animated conversations nearly drowned out pop music playing from speakers overhead. It looked like the long metal tables were full, but Jessica knew space would magically appear when she and Brittany were ready to sit down. It was sort of like Moses and that sea. What was the name of it? The Red Sea? Uh, it was the way Moses had made the water stand up and get out of the way. Jessica and Brittany had similar powers. All they had to do was walk through the crowd, and kids would stand up and make space for them. Even before they officially were named Queen and Princess, they'd had regal powers. Both Jessica's and Brittany's mums were cheerleaders and homecoming and prom queens when they were in high school, this very high school, before it got infected with junior high kids. They, want to, they went on to be cheerleaders and queens in college too. Jessica's mum was runner-up in a national pageant as well. Uh, Brittany's mum was a runaway model before she married Brittany's dad. 
It seemed Jessica's and Brittany's noble status was in their DNA. Did you, like, put some of those berries we got at the farmer's market in your smoothie? Brittany asked Jessica as they started walking toward the heart of the huge beige walled room stuffed with long tables, snuffing kids, and food smells that made their noses wrinkle. Jessica's nose told her the entree of the day was fish sticks, and the side dish was Brussels sprouts and cabbage. Who ate that? As if I forget, Jessica said. She elbowed her friend and gave her a pretend dirty look. Brittany laughed. I hope they smell as sweet as they did when we got them. Like that, uh, stinky cabbage is going to ruin my nose flavor. It's, it's, it's beyond disgusting. I know, right? They kept walking through the throng, uh, totally unconcerned about finding a place to sit. And yes, there it was. Jessica smiled when she saw a couple of boys from their English class stand up and vacate their seats as Jessica and Brittany approached. You can sit here, one of them, Evan. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, I hate everything. <laughs> oh, is that the third time that, that the name Evan has appeared? I believe it is, right? Ah, oh. I hate life. You can sit here, one of them, Evan, said as he stepped away from the table. He was kind of cute in a hobo vibe sort of way. His clothes were always hanging off him and they were all retro. But he had great hooded eyes and a fluid way of moving that kept him from being a dweeb. Jessica turned up the amps on her smile and aimed for the vacated space as Evan and his friend walked away. Before she could get to it, though, both of the folding beige metal chairs were taken by, by Mindy and Cindy. The two girls darted in front in. The two girls darted in from the opposite, uh, opposite direction, plopped down and immediately pulled sandwiches from little kid lunch boxes. Cindy's had flowers on it. Mindy's had a pink unicorn on the side. Are you, like, kidding me? Brittany asked. She stood shoulder to shoulder with Jessica and stared at the two upstarts. Just like, who do they think they are, right? Although the vast majority of the kids in the cafeteria were unaware of the colossal forks pass, that had just been made. Or faux pas. I, I don't know, is that like a French word? I have no idea what this is. Faux pas. That had just been made. Everyone at the table Evan and his friend had just vacated went silent. All the occupants at the two adjoining tables started talking too. Every kid at the silenced tables craned their necks to stare at the two red-headed girls. That made 31 pairs of eyes that shifted from the oblivious girls at the table to the dumbfounded girls hovering behind them. Jessica ground her teeth for half a second. Then she remembered that grinding her teeth was bad for them. She set her shoulders and raised her chin. Excuse me, she said evenly. Her tone was as placid as a lake on a calm day, but it was just as benign as the jagged toothed eels that lurked below the lake's surface. She'd been bitten by an eel like that when she was a little girl. She knew how surface appearances could be deceiving, and she delighted in being that placid lake in situations like these. It was so much fun to bring out the eels once you got others to rea relax and think all was well. Mindy, her pudgy cheeks puffed out. E wait, Mindy, her pudgy cheeks puffed out even more than usual by whatever food she had stuffed in her mouth. Looked up at Jessica. Oh, hi. She looked back down at the peanut butter and jelly sandwich lying on plastic wrap in front of her. Do you really think? Oh, hi, is the appropriate response when someone says, excuse me? Jessica asked Mindy. Oh, I said that. <laughs> oh, Jessica asked Mindy. Cindy looked up from what smelled like a tuna sandwich. She glanced around at all the kids on the table. Her bug-like hazel eyes blinked several times. What's the matter? She asked. Oh, sorry. I can't tell who's who. <laughs> What's the matter? She asked. Do we break some rule? She sniffed and pulled out a tissue to wipe her nose. Seriously, like, what classes do you two take? Brittany asked. Eighth grade oblivious? Junior level rude? Jessica chuckled. She loved her friend's sense of humour. Mindy frowned and put down her sandwich. I don't get what's going on. That's like, duh, exactly my point, Brittany said. Jessica pointed at the two seats Mindy and Cindy occupied. Those are our seats. Oh, no. Those are our seats. Mindy raised an eyebrow. They, they are? She turned and looked behind her seat back. I don't see names. Did we get a scene, assigned seating? 
Jessica widened her eyes. Are you for real? The girl sitting next to Cindy, a junior varsity cheerleader named Valerie, a girl Jessica thought had a lot of potential, leaned over and whispered to Cindy. Cindy screwed up her face, whether in confusion or concentration wasn't clear. When Valerie leaned back, Cindy said in her ear-piercing squeak, Really? Mindy looked at her. What? Cindy pointed at Valerie. She says that these seats were being safe for Jessica and Brittany. She sneezed and then blew into her tissue. Mindy glanced up and looked around the table. She zeroed in on the one empty place on the end. She stood and looked around, spotting a single empty seat at one of the other tables filled with kids, paused mid-lunch, still quietly watching the unfolding drama. Mindy strode over and grabbed the metal chair, dragging it back across the linoleum floor with an annoying metallic scrape. Uh, she positioned it next to the single seat at the end of the table. She looked at Cindy. Can you grab my lunch, please, Cindy? You and I can squeeze in here. There's enough space as long as we don't try to chair dance while we eat. She laughed and plopped in the chair she'd stolen from the other table. Sure. She sniffled, then gathered both hers and Mindy's lunchboxes. She stood and carried them to the small open place at the table next to Mindy. Jessica tapped her foot as she watched the girl's audacious behaviour. She glanced at Brittany, who was opening and closing her mouth as if she was trying to remember how to talk. For several more, re for several more seconds, Jessica looked from the now vacant chairs to the silly girls at the end of the table. They weren't paying any attention to Jessica or Brittany. They were leaning toward each other, chattering away as if nothing had happened. Jessica sighed and sat down. Brittany settled in next to her. Jessica shrugged and said, Eighth graders, you can't live them, and you can't, like, kill them. Everyone laughed and returned to their lunches. Jessica shook her head and unscrewed the lid of her sleek silver insulated cup. It contained the fruit smoothie she always drank midday. It wasn't like her complexion took no work at all, right? She had to take some precautions against breakouts. Consuming the right combination of fruits and supplements was a must. Brittany agreed with Jessica about that, but she, usually she drank her smoothie in the morning. For lunch, she liked having a cup of vegetable soup, which her family's cook prepared uh, and placed in a thermal mug and tucked inside a small cotton canvas and rattan tote. It was a stylish carrier in a save the planet chic kind of way. Brittany pulled out her thermal mug and peered into the tote. Oh my god, Frida, she sighed. She, like, forgot your spoon again, right? Jessica said. She so forgot my spoon. Brittany looked around as if she could summon Frida from home to remedy the unforgivable error. Jessica clicked her tongue, then looked down at the table at Mindy. Mindy? <laughs> I don't know how else to say it apart from Mindy. Uh, she said the girl's name the same way she said her dog Titan's name when he tried to dig in her f ficus tree planter at home. The tone was sharp enough to compensate for the fact that it wasn't very loud. Mindy's head shot up. She was chewing again, her round cheeks bobbing up and down in a counter rhythm to her dimpled chin. She looked at Jessica and pointed at herself. Jessica rolled her eyes. No, the other Mindy? Mindy looked around the table, as if searching for the other Mindy. Oh my god, Brittany said again. This time... Uh, actually, no, she's saying, OMG. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany said again, this time, Jessica knew she was referencing Mindy's I complete ignorance. Yes, you. Jessica nodded at Mindy. Could you please get my friend here a spoon? Since you delayed our lunch, right? It seems like the least you can do. It is, right? Brittany agreed. Mindy swallowed what was in her mouth and shrugged. Sure, she popped up. Just a second, she trotted off. Jessica leaned toward Brittany. Maybe we could, like, train them to be like those, what are they called? Uh, the maids that help royal women get dressed. Ladies in waiting, right? Brittany said. That is it, that is it, totally. <laughs> Mindy handed Brittany the spoon and returned to her seat. She went right back to her little kid sandwich as if she hadn't just been ordered around. Jessica smiled and imagined Mindy and Cindy scurrying behind her and Brittany wherever they want. It was a seriously sick image. These guys... Seriously, these are the worst people. <laughs> like, we on the we've we've always been talking about like how like the guy in He Told Me Everything was was like horrible to everybody. Uh Matt from In the Flesh was just a, a horrible person. But 
that is on a completely different level to what this is. Like, these guys are just completely, like, they're the worst human beings I've ever heard in my life. Anyway. The rest of lunch passed without incident until Mindy and Cindy got up from the table just seconds after Jessica and Brittany did. All four girls headed to the cafeteria exit. Because Jessica and Brittany had arrived late to lunch and had taken their time, most of the cafeteria had cleared out by the time they got ready to leave. Are they, like, following us? Brittany asked Jessica, gesturing over her shoulder with her chin. Jessica shook her head. I think they're too spacey to even know they're behind us. She could hear the 8th graders babbling away behind her. They were discussing something about getting a ride with, from their mums. Hey babe! Derek called out from a couple of tables all the way. Hey Brit! Next to him, Roman shot a finger at Brittany, then winked at her. He saluted Jessica. Jessica and Brittany stopped to pose for their boyfriends. They did it as a matter of course. It was just what came naturally when the boys were looking at them. Burgers after practice? Derek called. Jessica and Brittany nodded and blew the guys a kiss. Then they turned and glided toward the cafeteria exit. It was always important to leave while you still had them hanging on. At the exit, Brittany suddenly lurched to a stop and almost fell over. Jessica grabbed her friend's arm and kept her from going down. She, almost, um, she also immediately saw why Brittany had almost fallen flat on her face. Mindy was kneeling right in the middle of the exit, trying the rainbow-coloured shoelaces on her sparkling purple shoes. As she tied, she babbled at Sinley. Uh, who sat next to her. Wait. Who? Yeah. Mom said we can stay at the dance until 11. I'm so jazzed. I had my dress out last night. The ruffles are so pretty. Can you even believe that? Jessica asked no one in particular. Mindy popped up. Believe what? She looked from Jessica to Brittany, who was attempting to slice Mindy to bits with her icy look. What? O oh, oops. I was in the way, wasn't I? Ding, ding, ding. Jessica sang. Huh? Mindy said. Cindy, who had been a few feet from her friend, turned back. What's going on? Mindy shook her head. I was being thoughtless. She smiled up at the other girls. I really am sorry, guys. She turned to look away. Uh, to walk away. Jessica grabbed Mindy's arms and yanked her out of the doorway. Hey! Cindy objected. Then she sneezed. She glared furiously at Jessica as she dug out the tissue. Mindy didn't say anything. She let Jessica pull her off to the side for the last few stragglers coming out of the cafeteria. Cindy immediately rushed to, Cin to Mindy's side. Jessica let go of Mindy's pudgy baby arm. Tell me you were not talking about the homecoming dance right now, because you couldn't have been talking about that dance. Mindy grinned. Sure, I was talking about the homecoming dance. Everyone's talking about it. You're going to look really pretty with the crown on, I'm sure of it. What colour will your dress be? Jessica opened her mouth, then closed it. She turned toward Brittany. Since when do 8th graders come to the high school dances? Before Brittany could answer, one of her fellow cheerleaders, Patrice, brushed past. Oh, don't get me started, you know. You don't hear that principal said that as long as they're in class here, they should be included in the dances? Patrice flipped her shiny black hair and made a face. It's insanity. She shrugged and strode away. Jessica turned back to Mindy. She made a face when she got a whiff of, win of Mindy's peanut butter breath. You do know that you're nobody, right? The pale skin between Mindy's reddish blonde brows furrowed. Is that slang for something? Brittany snorted. Jessica shook her head. No, you poor pitiful thing. It's fact. You're nobody. You and your bug-eyed friend. You are nobody. You're coming to the dance together because no one asked you out, right? Who would, right? For sure, Brittany said. Mindy's face flushed. Jessica waited for the tears to start. But they didn't come. Instead, Mindy shook her head and smiled. I feel really sorry for you. What? Jessica gawked at Mindy. Really? Mindy said. I'm sorry. You must not like yourself very much. What? This time Brittany joined in with her friend. Brittany's what was even a higher pitch than Jessica's. Mindy nodded. She turned to Cindy. Remember what our mum said, Cindy? Cindy bobbed her head and sent her, girl sh and sent her curls shaking. Sure. When kids are mean to you, it's, it's because they really want to be mean to themselves, but they can't. They're, I think mum said, projecting. She sniffed, then blew her nose. That sounds right, Mindy agreed. She looked up at Jessica. It's okay, you can't help it. If it makes you feel better to be mean to us, go ahead. No one likes you! Jessica practically screamed. I don't think she understands. <laughs> 
Mindy looked around at a couple dozen kids who had stopped to watch what was going on. She chewed on her lower lip, then she shrugged. Well, I don't know if that's true, but if that is... Wait. Never mind, this is Mindy speaking. Ah! <laughs> well, I don't know if that's true, but if it is, that's okay too, because we like us, don't we, Cindy? Cindy nodded. We sure do. Clutching, clutching her snot-filled tissue, she put her arm around Mindy. We're friends forever. We do everything together. Oh, Hang on. We're friends forever. We do everything together. Together forever. Ah! <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop screaming. Uh, Mindy nodded. That's enough for us. She glanced up at the clock above the cafeteria door. Sorry to be rude, but we need to get to robotics class. Mindy and Cindy turned and hurried away. Jessica sta stared at them, her mouth hanging open. She felt Brittany take her arm. Come on, Jess. We need to get to robotics class too. Jessica made a sound not unlike the one Titan made when he spotted a squirrel in his backyard. It was a cross between a now uh, sorry, a growl and a groan. I don't know if I can, like, look at those two for the next hour, she whispered to Brittany. I know, right? Can you even believe what she said? It was like cray-cray. Jessica didn't respond. She was too angry. Projecting, she thought. The nerve of the little. Come on, Brittany said. We'll figure out what to do with them later. We don't want to miss robotics, remember? Mr. Thornton is assigning our projects today. I don't want something too difficult. Jessica sighed. Good point. Let's go. I want to point out something right now. That everything that we've seen in the story, basically, has come in pairs, right? We've got Jessica and, uh, what was the other girl's name? Brittany. We've got Jessica and Brittany. And uh, we also have Mindy and Cindy, who is also a pair. But uh, also, we have their boyfriends as well. So everything is coming in pairs, and it seems like maybe two people are going to get stuck together at the end or something. It's kind of like foreshadowing. Anyway, this is very this is, this is good so far. Hey guys, I'm very very sorry. Uh, sorry, let me just talk here. Uh, I'm very very sorry for the first part and the fact that it doesn't have video, so you can't see the words on the screen. Hopefully, a lot of you have books, so you can read along with me anyway. Um, but to anybody who's just watching the video, I am really sorry for that. Um, but we have video now, so hopefully I've salvaged this entire audiobook for that. So anyway, let's continue. The robotics classroom was in a mostly deserted wing of the school. Jessica knew the wing still had storage rooms that, was, that were accessed from time to time, but the classroom that robotics was in was the only one being used. The school once had a very active art program and dance program in this wing, but budget cuts had shut down those curricula. Money was funneled into robotics and computer programming instead of the arts, and even that wasn't enough money. The reason their class was using old donated animatronics was because there was no funds to buy state-of-the-art animatronic parts. The classroom didn't get much attention from janitorial or maintenance either. It was usually far too dusty to suit Jessica. But Jessica didn't care either way about the arts or robotics. She wasn't particularly good at computers, painting or dance. Her forte was form, not function. Oh, and that reminded her, maintenance should do something about the function of her locker. The robotics classroom was a large warehouse-like room with tall ceilings guarded by exposed metal beams. The floors were covered with rubberized interlocking squares and the metal work tables were bright red. Grey pegboards lined the walls of the room and every robotics part you could think of hung on hooks from these boards. The room was far too industrial to suit Jessica's tastes, but she tolerated it like everyone else. Even though robotics was a required class for sophomores, and many of Jessica's classmates groused about it, she secretly didn't mind it. Most of the time she didn't really understand what she was doing, but she did think it was fun. And it played into her other strength, control. Of course, she liked control best when she was controlling people, but controlling machines seemed to be a natural extension of that. Even with all her beauty and social skills, Jessica never got everything and anything and everyone around her to act as she wanted them to. There was always someone who was saying the wrong thing or doing the wrong thing. Take the two red-headed red morons, for instance. With her class popularity and physical presence, she, stood, she should have been able to wrap uh, Mindy and Cindy around her manicured finger. That they didn't afford her the 
appropriate amount of reverse reverence was like having a splinter stuck just under the skin. She hated when that happened. She hated Mindy and Cindy even more. The room's red table sat in rows, three tables in each of the five rows. Jessica and Brittany took their seats at the middle table in the third row, not too close to the front so they wouldn't appear to be geeks, not too close to the back where they'd be surrounded by outcasts. They always sat where their vaulted status could be recognised. The robotics teacher, Mr Thornton, a short 20-something man with bird-like features, beady eyes, a pointed nose and fine brown hair, strode into class and set a stack of books and schematics on his desk. Jessica shook her head at the red and gold diamond pattern sweater vest that hung loosely over Mr Thornton's narrow chest. Between the vests he always wore and his thick black-rimmed glasses, Mr Thornton was the poster boy for geeks everywhere. Mr Thornton looked askance at the class, like, like, as he always did. He had a little trouble with eye contact. He never faced straight at the class, and when you talked to him directly, he focused his gaze about a foot above your head. Jessica thought that was sort of endearing, in a lovable nerd kind of way. Talk among yourselves for a few minutes. The shipment just came in, and I need to supervise the... He trailed off and disappeared into the workroom adjacent to the robotics classroom. That was something else Mr Thornton did. He frequently left his son sentences unfinished. It was weird. Once, Brittany suggested that Mr Thornton might be an animatronic, one with advanced programming and a minor glitch that prevented him from completing his communications. Jessica thought that was hysterically funny. What do you want... What do you want to do about them? <laughs> Brittany asked. Jessica blinked and looked at her friend. What? About who? Brittany nodded toward Mindy and Cindy, who were sitting in front row. Jessica looked at the backs of the two redheads. Mindy and Cindy had only joined the class a couple weeks before. Apparently they were part of some gifted class that did robotics competitions. They even worked out of the robotics club, uh, meeting early each morning before the school day began, and now they were auditing the sophomore class, little freaks. Jessica opened her mouth to answer her friend, but before she could, a loud clattering and thumping accompanied Mr Thornton back into the room. The racket came from the wheels of a cart he was pushing in front of him. The cart was piled with things that looked like they should have been either in old sci-fi movies, amusement parks, or circuses. Momentarily forgetting Mindy and Cindy, Jessica sat up straight and leaned forward to see what was on the cart. She spotted a couple of silver robot skeletons, vaguely man-shaped grey robots that looked like aliens, and several mechanical animals. Many were dog and cat shaped, and few looked like a miniature barn animal and exotic animals. Very interesting. She spotted a cow, a horse, an orangutan, a black panther, a flamingo, and a huge pink pig. Huge pink pig. Pig, pig, pig patch, <laughs> pig patch is back. The pig was the only life-size thing on the cart. Ooh, okay, interesting information. The cow, horse, and panther were about the same size as the dog and cats. All the mechanical animals looked like they were designed to stand on their back of two feet, and most wore some piece of clothing or accessory, reminding her more of sports team mascots than real animals. Jessica saw a couple bow ties and vests, two feather boas, Short pants with suspenders on the flamingo. Oh, that's so cute. A bowler hat, striped socks, and a pair of red gloves. The pig was the closest to being fully dressed. It wore what looked like frilly waitress uniform in the shade of pink, just a little darker than its fuzzy pig piggy skin. Atop its broad hat, uh, head sat a pillbox-shaped pink cap with a ruffled edge. Other than the outfit and the fact that it had fuzzy pink hands instead of hooves, it looked a lot like a real pig. Okay, class, let's get started on today's, Mr. Thornton said. <laughs> he gestured at the cartload of robotic characters he'd just dragged in and grinned sideways at the class. What we have here is a vintage animatronic bonanza, he uttered one of his rare laughs. Je Jessica winced. She was glad his laughs were rare. He sounded like a tortured mouse when he laughed. Mr. Thornton sobered. None of these animatronics function at the moment, but every one of them is capable of... Your partner up, and each partnership will get one of these to work on, so it will be... Okay. You'll have two jobs to do. <laughs> First, do whatever is needed so your animatronic will function as it's supposed to, and second, program it so it performs some specific task. You will then either have it perform for the class or videotape it if the function is done outside of the class where we can't... Each one of these has something to teach us, so let's... <laughs> 
<laughs> this this book is just a big meme. I swear. I swear this story is just a big meme. He moved over to the car and pulled out one of the small ro dog robots. It wore a yellow dog sweater. This dog is an example of an animatronic that uses servos, and we will we all know that servos are controlled by. Of course, this is why it's in the book. This is why it's in the book because. It's, it has useful information and we're not going to be told about it. <laughs> Brilliant. Mr. Thornton t uh, looked out over the top of the class and pushed his glasses up onto his nose. Anyone? Lindy raised her hand. Servos are controlled by sending an electrical pulse through the control wire. Good, Mr. Thornton said. Jessica rolled her eyes. When a servo goes bad, Mr. Thornton continued, it's usually because of one of seven problems we discussed yesterday. Does anyone want to give us a review of... He pointed at Cindy when her hand shot up. Contamination, like from oil or coolant, bad bearings, electrical degrade, uh, degrade, degradation, sorry, poor installation, like the belts are too tight or couplings are worn out, a bad power supply or drive, damaged cables or overload. Good, Mr. Thornton said. So this dog, he set the animatronic dog on his desk, has a bad servo. Cindy, you and Mindy can take this. Cindy and Mindy clapped their hands like five-year-olds. Mr. Thornton grinned at a spot above their heads and set the dog on the table in front of them. Mr. Thornton turned to the cart and grabbed the orangutan, a goat and a cat. More servo issues with these. Let's see who... Mr. Thornton parceled out the robotic animals. Brittany leaned close to Jessica and whispered, Do you want to work on a servo problem? Jessica shrugged. Whatever. Mr. Thornton returned to the front of the class after handing out several of the mechanical animals. Although servos have a lot of pros in terms of their functionality, Mr. Thornton said, stopping by the cart, there can be noise issues with, he reached out and grabbed the animatronic, Flamingo. He activated it and when it moved its legs, the mechanism screeched. Mr. Thornton turned it off. Pneumatic setups, by comparison, are fairly quiet and he got up and approached a cart. Wrestling with the endo exoskeletons and human-shaped animatronics, Mr. Thornton unburied the pig at the bottom of what was left of the pile. Now that it was laying on its back on the cart, alone, Jessica could clearly see the pig's pink pot belly, stubby legs, and sweetly smiling face. The mechanical pig was old. Jessica could see glinting silver showing through the pig's pink felt layer here and there. Mr. Thornton gestured at the prone pig. Meet Rosie Porkchop. Rosie has a pneumatic system, which means she can lift a lot more weight than her fellow. She has a lot of pressure pumping through her lines, so she has quite a bit of potential. But her programming is... Obviously she's too heavy to move, except on this cart. Whoever gets her will have to come back in the evenings to work on her, so... Jessica nudged Brittany and hissed, Don't look at him. They'd already had to do one after hours project this year, and she didn't want to... Jessica and Brittany, you two get Rosie. Jessica and Brittany groaned in unison. Now let's get the rest of these passed, Mr. Thornton said. Brittany whispered to Jessica, Seriously? We'll have to come back here this evening and work on a pig? Jessica rolled her eyes. Maybe she didn't like robotics class after all. When Jessica and Brittany returned to the robotics classroom after cheerleading practice, freshly showered and once again wearing their school outfits, they found Mr. Thornton at his desk and Rosie on the cart by herself at the back of the room. Mr. Thornton looked up and gazed just past Jessica's shoulder. There you are. I put Rosie at the back for you to work. Sorry, she's too big to remove from the school, but... I had to assign her to a team I could trust to stay after hours so I could get administrative approval for you to be in here for... He waved a hand towards Rosie. She's all yours. Jessica and Brittany exchanged a glance, sighed in unison, and went, back to the, um, went to the back of the class. Together they sat down on their leather backpacks. Jessica reached into hers, uh, grabbed her lip gloss and touched up her lips. Brittany did the same. They stood together and looked at the pig. Uh, girls, Mr. Thornton called out. They turned. He waved a thin stack of papers at them. Here are some specs that came with Rosie when she... You'll want to look at them. She's not your typical animatronic and she has a characteristic that is important to you. Jessica strode over and took the papers. We'll read everything, like super carefully, she said. Mr. Thornton nodded. I'll be here for a little while longer if you have any questions for... Thanks, Mr. Thornton. Jessica returned to Brittany and dropped the papers on the table next to Rosie. Neither girl looked at him. Uh, they returned to looking at the pig. It's so, like, big, 
Brittany said. She sighed. Jessica nodded. She glared at the huge pig. The sound of dual giggles suddenly burst into the room behind Jessica and Brittany. They turned and watched Cindy and Mindy skip over to Mr Thornton. Mindy gra carried the dog animatronic they were working on. What? Did they get, like, a small one? Brittany asked. Jessica shook her head. She watched the little brats chatter with Mr Thornton. Then she turned and looked at Rosie. She looked back at the brats and then back to Rosie. She grinned and nudged Brittany. Picture this, Jessica whispered. She held her hands out in front of her like she was framing a screen. Little Mindy and Cindy, she jerked her head to indicate the two girls who were still talking with the teacher, are walking into the homecoming dance like they're all that. They're like, we don't care if anyone likes us. We like ourselves. In a continued whisper, she mimicked Mindy's chipmunk voice. Brittany made a face and nodded. And along comes our new BFF Rosie Porkchop, large, large and in charge. Jessica held out her arms to indicate the animatronic pig's size. No, I know what's going to happen. Mindy and Cindy are going to be combined. Possibly. I reckon they're going to they're gonna, um, put Mindy and Cindy together in like the pig suit or something. And then, I don't know. I, I have no idea. <laughs> Jessica held out her arms to indicate the animatronic's pig's size. She's been programmed by us, of course, to walk right up to those little two twerps, knock them down, and, she grinned, sit on them. Brittany laughed loudly, and Jessica shushed her. Brittany covered her mouth, then hugged Jessica. That's brilliant, she whispered. Is that the task we'll give her, like, for our project? Jessica rolled her eyes. We should probably have her do something that won't get us in trouble, don't you think? Brittany blushed and nodded. But this might be more fun than I thought it was going to be. Jessica said, for sure, Brittany agreed. Jessica opened her backpack and pulled out her laptop. I don't think, I don't think this should take very long. We just need to download her command software and go over it until we find out her glitch. And then we can tweak it to do whatever we want her to do. Brittany nodded, but frowned. Um, do you know, like, we're stuck at programming, right? Jessica shrugged. Yeah, but that would give us a nice alibi later. We can say we have no idea what went wrong with the programming, what made Rosie go crazy and knock him over, or spill punch on them or whatever. And besides, it's the complicated programming stuff we always get wrong. This is just basic programming of voice commands, right? She pulled up a seat and placed it next to Rosie's front end. Sitting with her legs perfectly crossed, Jessica lifted the flap that hid Rosie's controls. First, we need to create the uplink, and then she pressed a button. A soft puff, followed by a series of metallic clicks and snaps that preceded a louder whoosh, and both girls jumped when Rosie's lower belly popped open. What did you do? Is she going like, have babies? <laughs> Jessica laughed, but then she shrugged. What if there were animatronic piglets inside Rosie, even with the mechanisms that uh, she must have had inside her exoskeleton? Rosie certainly was big enough to store at least a dozen of them, if not more. After exchanging a glance, Jessica and Brittany both bent over to peer into Rosie's, Rosie's belly. Expecting to see a full system of hydraulics and possibly a few baby pigs, Jessica raised her eyebrow when she saw that Rosie's belly was, for the most part, empty. A network of metal gears, prongs and sharp looking rods, presumably powered by hydraulics, lined the interior wall of the pig's belly but the vast majority of the cavernous space was totally open and big enough to hold a person, maybe two at most. Jessica stared into Rosie Porkchop's depths. She grinned and leaned back. Glancing up at Mr Thornton, who was still focused on his laptop, Jessica tugged on Brittany's hand. Brittany turned to look at Jessica. I have an even better idea than my original one, Jessica whispered. What? Brittany whispered back. Jessica hummed as she picked up the papers Mr Thornton had handed her and began to skim through them. Brittany looked over her shoulder. Flipping pages, Jessica reached a section titled General Operation. Under that was a paragraph in bold. Rosie Porkchop is a dual-purpose animatronic. The system can be engaged in traditional animatronic mode and also in human interface or suit mode, i.e. Rosie can be worn like a suit. Ah, so it, it, this, this is going to tell us about spring locks, I bet. There was more, but Jessica's gaze flicked down the page to the word warning, which was followed by a paragraph of bold red writing. Jessica quickly read through it. Rosie Porkchop can train spring locks. Oh, yes! <laughs> Woo! 
Yes, we got a story about spring locks. Okay, we haven't had this since um, we haven't had this since uh the new kid, right? We haven't had spring locks. Okay, Rosie pork chop contains spring locks. Spring locks engage to allow Rosie pork chop to function autonomously in animatronic mode. When engaged, metal components fill the entire interior of the animatronic. Rosie pork chop can also be worn as a suit. This is called human interface mode. When Rosie pork chop is in human interface mode, the spring locks disengage and retract into Rosie's endoskeleton. Do not switch modes while Rosie pork chop is occupied. Sharp components of the spring lock system can cause serious bodily harm. That is a very important paragraph in this story. That tells us a lot, actually. Because we haven't seen, like, the inner... Like, obviously, we assume that's how it worked, but we haven't seen the inner, like, the science of the uh, the spring locks and stuff and how, how it works properly. Wow, okay, we got some spring lock stuff. I'm so excited for this story now. She grinned and looked at Brittany. Guess what? What? Rosie can be occupied. So? Jessica didn't answer. She quickly glanced through Rosie's upload instructions. While she did that, Cindy and Mindy called out, Bye, Mr. Thornton. Jessica and Brittany turned to watch the little redhead skip out of the classroom. Jessica glanced at Mr. Thornton. His gaze was on his laptop. Jessica dropped the papers, grabbed Brittany's hand and pulled her close. She whispered, So forget what I said before. I have a better idea. Oh no, they're going to put them in the suit and then spring lock them. Oh no. What? Jessica glanced again at Mr. Thornton. He was still concentrating on his computer. Even so, she turned her back and kept her voice low. Rosie's pneumatic system powers the trapdoor, and it's designed to be a hermetic seal. Brittany frowned a question. You know, those seals that keep in anything. Oh, right. The instruction said something about Rosie as a container for something. She waved a hand. I don't know. I didn't read it closely, but here's what I'm thinking. She scooted her chair closer to Brittany's. Those two little snuts think that they can come to the homecoming dance. Well, they're coming all right, but not in their ruffled little dresses. They're coming in her. She pointed at Rosie Porkchop, specifically at Rosie's gaping belly. Brittany looked at Rosie's empty stomach and slowly started to grin. We're going to stick them in there? Jessica shook her head. We aren't. We'll have Rosie do it. It'll serve them right. They'll be all like, we'll do everything together from inside Rosie Porkchop. Oh, that's like inspired, Brittany said. I know, right? Brittany nodded, her eyes bright. This is going to be so savage. Jessica grinned. All we have to do is program Rosie to grab the little snuts and put them in her belly. Once they're in, this door will close. She pointed to the pink door that hung open under Rosie's belly. She tapped it. See, it has the soft sealed fabric stuff on the outside, but it's hard metal on the inside. Once it's locked and sealed, they won't be able to get out. She grinned. They'll be trapped together. Brittany nodded again. I love it. Jessica smiled. Good, me too. She sighed. There's just one problem. What? It's going to take us a while. Jessica reached into Rosie's control panel and pulled out a clump of wires. How about I just get the uplink going and then we'll have to... Then we could go have burgers with the guys. After that, we'll come back here and spend the evening programming Rosie. Okay. Jessica opened her laptop and connected the upload wire. She handed another wire to Brittany. Plug that into the wall. I guess she has to charge too. Brittany nodded and dutifully plugged in the pig. Then she watched Jessica create an uplink with Rosie. Jessica noticed Brittany examining her nails again. Then she saw... Then saw her friend stand to get her backpack. Brittany snapped her fingers and sat back down. What? Jessica asked. When I reached for my backpack, I had an idea. Instead of just... She lowered her voice to whisper. Trapping them. Why don't we program Rosie to serve us while they're stuck inside? That will make Mindy and Cindy like our own lady's maid. They can be our servant, like fetching things for us and waiting on us. Like royalty, Jessica said, beaming. You're so good. Brittany took a bow. She looked at Mr. Thornton, who had stood up at his desk. Hurry up and get everything going. I can't wait to do this. Me neither. Jessica grinned and returned to her task. This was why she loved Brittany so much. She and Jessica had, like, shared thoughts. They always agreed, and one of them nearly always could take the other's idea and make it better. They made an unstoppable team. 
Jessica tapped a couple keys and got the upload started. Then she grabbed her backpack and headed towards the door. Brittany followed her. Because robotics was in the mostly deserted wing that could be locked off from the rest of the school, Mr Thornton had gotten permission from the principal to let some of his students come in after hours to work on projects. They used an exterior door that gave them access to this wing only. Before they reached the door, Jessica called out, Mr Thornton. Hmm? He didn't look up from his computer. We've got Rosie's upload going. We're going to come back later to work on her. Can we have the after hours key? Sounds good. Hmm? Oh, sure, yes. Mr Thornton pulled the key from his desk drawer. Jessica took the key from their teacher and the girls headed to the classroom door. Bye, Mr Thornton. They called in unison as they left. Oh, goodbye. He called after them. As they walked away, Brittany said, He said goodbye, not bye. Jessica glanced at her friend. So? Hmm. Oh, I don't know. I guess it just sounds like kind of final, you know? Jessica grinned and hugged Brittany. You slay me. That was weird. <laughs> Jessica and Brittany on Derek's and Roman's arms crossed the crowded parking lot in front of Burger Dom, a local fast food hangout known for the best burgers in the country and even better milkshakes. If it wasn't for the food, Jessica wouldn't have been caught dead in the place. It was housed in a bright orange building shaped like a hamburger bun. How cliche could you get? But it was in the place to be after school. The parking lot was filled with cars, bicycles and big groups of students on foot. At least three different radios played, creating a musical war between rap, pop and country. A few junior girls were dancing at the edge of the lot. Jessica recognised most of her classmates along with, uh, among, the clou uh, yeah, among the crowd, and many of them were watching the royal couples head toward the restaurant's lobby. Because the pavement was uneven, Jessica shifted her gaze to her feet. She wasn't about to trip and put a hitch in her perfect glide. Her downcast attention, however, didn't warn her of other potential hazards. Suddenly, a bicycle swept past Jessica, its back wheels barely missing her left toes. She faltered, and if it hadn't been for Derek's arm, which she quickly clutched with all her strength, she would have lost her balance. Watch where you're going, Derek bellowed at the cyclist. At the bicy bi bicyclist? Is that a word? I I've never seen that word, at the cyclist. Jessica looked up to see who had, who had nearly run over her toes, and she sighed dramatically. Of course. She muttered. What, babe? Derek asked. Jessica smiled up at him. She didn't want to get into it, so she just said, Eighth graders? Yeah, tell me about it. They're everywhere. Jessica glanced at Brittany, who gave Jessica a quick smile. She'd also noticed that the kid on the bike had been Mindy. Jessica was sure Brittany was thinking the same thing. It wouldn't be long before they got payback. Oh, man, Derek said as he pushed open Burger Dom's double glass doors. Look at the line. This is worse than Friday nights after a game. Jessica noted the semi-line-shaped cluster of students pressing into the lobby, waiting their turn to order. Inhaling the smells of onions, french fries and charbroiled burgers, she scanned the tables in the small dining area. Every one of the orange-topped metal tables was occupied. Every dark blue booth was, with, was jammed with kids. And half of them, she couldn't help but notice, were munchkins, clearly 7th and 8th graders. It's bad enough they're in our school, she said, but now they're taking over the hangouts too. I know, right? Brittany said. It was amazing that Brittany had even heard Jessica. The noise level in the place was more rock concert than restaurant. Jessica threw back her hair and lifted her chin. Excuse me, she said loud enough to prompt the kids in front of her to turn. She stepped toward them. You need to let me by. She said it in the same tone her mother used uh, for everyone who worked for her. It was a cross between imperious and soothing. Just the right combination to make a person feel like not only was it impossible for them to say no, but they'd feel better after saying yes. The kids parted and Jessica swept through the opening. When she reached the next barrier of kids, she repeated the process. In under 20 seconds, she stood at the sh shiny silver counter in front of a kitchen filled with scurrying orange and blue clad losers who were too poor or too ugly to get a decent job. More such losers stood behind two cash registers. One of those wore a name tag that read Irwin. Irwin was ringing up a order, but he glanced over at Jessica and grinned at her. Hey, Irwin, she said in a tone that suggested she couldn't possibly be happier to see anyone. You're racking the orange and blue today. Irwin, a skinny guy with bad skin and worse teeth, flushed. Hi, Jessica, he said as he counted out change to the threesome in front of his register. 
God, threesome. <laughs> as soon as Erwin closed his register and the three kids clutching an orange 17 started to move aside, Jessica stepped in front of the kids in line. Could you get us our usual, Erwin? She turned and gestured toward Derek, Brittany and Roman, who hadn't yet made it through the throng. Jessica secretly revealed in her superior crowd parting skills. Brittany was pretty good at getting a room to do her bidding, but she couldn't compete with Jessica. Erwin glanced around and frowned. Um, he began. I know they were next, Jessica gestured at the kids breathing on her neck. Like, literally. Uh... Oh, that wasn't her saying it. One of the girls was chewing grape gum, and not only was her hot breath on Jessica's skin, the, gape, the grape smell was uh, long, strong enough to dominate the grill smells. But here we are in such a rush with, like, the homecoming duties and stuff. If you could just... She flipped her hair and locked her blue eyes on Erwin's pale brown ones. He shrugged and tapped in the order. One of the boys behind Jessica protested, Dude! <laughs> Erwin tried to reassure him. This will take a second. Grape gum girl, a voyable player whose name Jessica couldn't remember. She didn't have to remember it, the girl wasn't anyone worth bothering about. Sighed loudly, exhaling spitty gum breath into Jessica's hair. She'd have to go home and shower before she and Brittany went back to school to start programming Rosie Porkchop. Thanks so much, Erwin, Jessica said. She took money from her backpack and paid for the food. She knew Derek would reimburse her immediately. He never wanted her to pay for anything. That's the guy's job. He always said. It was so sweet. Erwin took her money, gave her change, and handed her an orange plastic 18. She flashed him a smile, designed to leave him feeling like he was special, even though he clearly wasn't. Then she turned. Grape gum girl gave Jessica a dirty look. Jessica leaned close to her ear. Get over it, and you might want to invest in some tweezers. Your eyebrows are growing together. Jessica walked away, and didn't care even a little that grape gum girl was glaring at her back. Jessica could feel it, but it so didn't matter. When Jessica returned to Brittany, Derek and Roman, she handed Derek the 18. Here you go. Once you get the food, let's eat in your convertible. It's way too crazy in here. Sure, babe. Way to rush the line. He pantomimed a defensive forward charging toward the quarterback. Jessica made a kissy face at him and then linked her arm through Brittany's. Let's let the boys handle the rabid crowd. Brittany nodded, for sure. <laughs> oh. She and Jessica tossed their hair in unison and strode from the restaurant, their steps in perfect sync. It was after eight before Jessica and Brittany got back to the school. Between hanging out with the guys and then going home to shower and then taking time to redo their hair and makeup and decide what perfect programming outfits were, it just took a while before they could return. Letting themselves in the back door of the deserted wing, they stood in the long, quiet hallway and contemplated the hundred feet or so they had to go to reach the classroom. The hallway was only dimly lit by emergency lights, which put the bare tan walls, the scuffed beige linoleum floor, and the lockers lining the hall in gloomy shadows. The lockers in this part of the school weren't used, at least not officially. Jessica knew that some of the kids left messages for each other in the lockers. She couldn't help but wonder what else might be hidden in them. Because of the empty lockers and equally bare walls and floors, all sounds seemed amplified. Jessica's and Brittany's breathing sounded like it was coming from 20 girls instead of two. It's so, like, creepy in here, when no one's around, Brittany said. Her voice echoed down the hall. You said that last time we had to stay late, Jessica reminded her, bumping shoulders with Brittany. Yeah, I probably did, but it's still true. Yeah, Jessica turned and checked her to be sure. The outer door locked behind them. When it clicked into place, she nodded, We're locked in. Yeah, but like, with who? Brittany asked, visibly shivering. You know it wouldn't be hard for some perv to sneak into school during the day and then hide and wait until after everyone else has gone and Jessica smacked Brittany's arm. Stop it, you're gonna freak me out too. She rubbed her arms, which were now covered with prickly hairs. Sorry. Jessica took Brittany's wrist. Come on. We should have brought the guys, Brittany said. Then we wouldn't get anything done, Jessica pointed out. True. Let's go. Once we're in the classroom, we'll barricade the door like we did last time, if, it's, if it'll make you feel better. Me? You've got the goosebumps too, Brittany accused. Okay, so I don't like it in here either. Brittany tugged on Jessica's arm. Let's hurry. Their footsteps echoing around them, Jessica and Brittany hurried down the hall. Neither com 
commented when they both occasionally checked over their shoulders. Jessica was relieved when they breached the robotics classroom and shoved the door open. Brittany scrabbled for the light switch before the door could swing shut. The previous time they'd been in after hours, they discovered that the classroom door didn't lock. Some discussion had ensued about whether to get over their paranoia or just give in to it. The conversation had resulted in a give in to it strategy, shoving one of the classroom tables in front of the door. This time, they didn't waste time with discussion. Without speaking, they moved together to the nearest table and shoved it over to block the door. Then they both turned, exhaled and surveyed the room. The overhead fluorescent lights in the classroom did relieve some of the creep factor of being in the deserted wing. However, that relief was countered by the eerie presence of all the robotic parts in the room. Metal arms and heads and disembodied torsos weren't exactly uh, comforting decor. Jessica and Brittany went to the back of the room where, Lo where Rosie still lay on her cart. Hooked up to both the wall and the laptop, it looked like she was in intensive care or something. At this point, if Rosie were to move, Jessica would have run screaming from the room. Uh, Jessica? Brittany said. Jessica shook her head. Sorry, you've got me your spook now. Brittany put an arm around her friend. Come on, let's go and try out our new lip gloss. That'll make us feel better. Jessica nodded. On their way over to the school, they'd stopped at the store to get some munchies in case they were here a while. Their favourite celeb had just released a new lip gloss that caught their eye, of course. They had to buy some. Brittany pulled Jessica down into a chair next to the one she settled on. The girls applied their gloss, pink for Brittany, red for Jessica, and looked at each other. Gorgeous, Jessica said. Brittany grinned. I know, right? Jessica took a deep breath and reached for her computer, which was just where she'd left it. Okay, she said. Let's see if we're good to go. She tapped the key to take the computer out of sleep mode and looked at the screen. According to the display, the upload was complete. Uh, Jessica began tapping at keys. Do you, like, know what you're doing? Brittany asked. Jessica laughed. Probably not, but how hard can it be? She gestured at the screen. See? Rosie's system is run by a software program that can't be modified. She frowned at the screen for a few minutes, reading the lines of code that were already there. Brittany leaned in and read, and read over Jessica's shoulder. It looks like you just input the, uh, the descriptive phrases, like that one. She pointed to the line 41 of the code, then read what came after the line number. Reaches out number, or hashtag, sev, or hash, it's, it's actually called a hash, it's not called a hashtag. It's called a hashtag on Twitter, but it, the symbol is a hash. Sorry, fun fact for those own. Uh, reaches out, hash 7v800. I think it assigns a number to the plain word commands. I think you're right, Jessica said, twirling a lock of super soft hair around her index finger. We just need to make a list of the commands we want the program we want to program into Rosie, and then we can assign the right numbers to them and input them. Exactly right, Brittany said. Jessica peered at the code. Okay, realistically, we're probably limited in what we have, we, what we can have Rosie to do. Uh, but how about we make a wish list, then see what we can do? Brittany nodded. Great idea. Jessica minimized the software screen and opened a blank doc. Okay, so what do we want our little servants to do for us? She grinned. Well, it'd be nice if we never had to get something for ourselves. Brittany leaned back in her chair. The chair creaked, which sent a tremor down Jessica's spine. She ignored it. So basically the command would be fetch, Jessica said, laughing. Ah, okay. The fact that she's laughing here is like... That's a weird detail. That's very... That's a weird line. So basically the command would be fetch. Jessica said laughing. Why would that be funny? Unless she knew about the fetch animatronic. I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking too deeply into this. I think I am actually. But I, I don't know. It's weird that Jessica is laughing here. I don't know. It's weird. Brittany broke down too. Yeah, maybe just for fun. We could do roll over and play dead. Yeah, see? Like, they're, they're talking about a dog. Uh, although I guess a, a basic command for a dog is fetch and roll over and play. Yeah, okay. It's, it's, it's got nothing to do with fetch the dog, but it, it, it's as in the commands that a dog does, and that's why she's laughing. Okay, that makes more sense. Jessica threw her head back and guffawed. Oh my gosh, stop it. That's too good. She typed in her document, roll over, play dead. 
Jessica laughed harder. This makes me think of Titan. If he was here, he'd be giving you five. Brittany grinned at Jessica. They should do that too. Jessica nodded enthusiastically. They should do all of Titan's tricks. Spin, Brittany said. She grinned. And bow. You know, sorry I keep pausing, but I, f I really feel like they're going to mess up the code for this and then it's going to do something else that they don't want it to do. Because th they're, they're not going to be professional coders or whatever, right? They're not actually good mechanics because they're, they're these popular kids at school. Anyway. Okay, seriously though, Jessica said. This is all good for laughs, but what could they do that would be really helpful? Brittany tapped her lowered teeth as she pondered. Carry our bags, polish our nails, especially our toenails, dry our hair, brush our hair, style our hair. But first, Rosie has to, like, grab those little freaks, pick them up, and put them inside her belly. Jessica tapped the keys on her computer, but then reached for the papers Mr. Thornton had handed her earlier. What's up? Brittany asked. Jessica waved her off, trying to figure out how he could get Rosie to recognise and make a beeline for the two brats first thing tomorrow. After skimming through all the possible commands, she noticed a section called Vocoder System. Apparently, Rosie's Vocoder System, which allowed her to interpret spoken commands, could also differentiate between the voices of adults and children. She was currently programmed to approach children and avoid adults. Makes sense for a kiddie animatronic, she guessed. Jessica smiled. Cindy's and Mindy's chirping kid voices hadn't dropped yet, so Rosie would be sure to zero in on it to zero in on them. Jessica just had to take the code one step further for Rosie to approach, then grab kids. As she started typing, a noise from the front of the classroom spun her around. What was that? Brittany had spun too. She was staring wide-eyed toward Mr. Thornton's desk. I saw something move. Brittany hissed. I thought I did too. Jessica whispered back. Both girls stood, holding hands. They uh, took a tentative step toward the front of the classroom. The second they did, something shifted on Mr. Thornton's desk. They both jumped back. What was that? Brittany yelped. Jessica shook her head and frowned. She looked around the classroom. It felt like all the robot eyes and the robot heads were watching them. She tugged on Brittany's hand and moved forward again. Brittany pulled free to grab a robotic arm off of one of the pegboards. Good thinking, Jessica said. I know, right? Brittany nodded several times. They crept forward together until a click stopped them. Jessica cocked her head, listening. She heard a fluttery sound, like a bird flapping its wings. Brittany raised the robotic alarm, uh, ro Brittany raised the robotic arm, readying for a fight. Jessica shook her head, but she moved forward again, looking hard at Mr. Thornton's desk. Brittany was right at her side. Suddenly, something shot out from behind Mr. Thornton's desk and skittered over the floor toward them. Jessica screamed. Brittany uh, screamed too, but she almost... But she also charged. Running forward, still screaming, she brought down the robotic arm and slammed it into the ground. The impact made a metallic crack. No, not into the ground, into something on the ground. Brittany raised the arm and brought it down again. Another metallic crack. What is it? Jessica asked. Brittany stepped back, robotic arm still poised for action. She looked down and she didn't wield, uh, wield the arm again. So Jessica stepped up beside her. It looks like a rat, Brittany said. Yeah, if rats were made of metal. Jessica and Brittany looked at each other. A robotic rat? Brittany asked. They looked back at it. The, a flexible steel cable originating uh, at the back of the robotic rat twitched. Brittany stumped on it. The cable stopped moving. Brittany looked at Jessica, frowned, and then looked around the room. Do you, like, think anything else is going to come to life? Uh, besides Rosie, I hope not. Jessica gazed at the robotic parts on the pegboards warily. A chill slithered through her body. She shook it off. Come on, let's do this so we can get out of here. For sure. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I had to say that again, Brittany said. Jessica sat down at the back table again and peered at her computer screen. Where was I? Brittany sat down beside Jessica, still holding tight to the robotic arm. You were putting in the grab the kid commands, Brittany said. Right. Jessica started typing again. When she finished, she asked, Okay, what else do we want them to do? Well, they seem pretty brainy. I wonder if their, like, brain power could, um, interface with Rosie's AI. Could they do homework for us? Hmm, Jessica said. That would be rad, but I think it would take a programmer better than me to code that. Brittany sighed. 
Yeah, just thought I'd throw it out there. I like it. Maybe it's something we can add later. We could talk one of the computer nerds into helping us. Oh, that's brilliant. Brittany said. So, back to everyday commands. Make your smoothie. Good one. Jessica typed. And packing your lunch. She, sh she typed more. Right, Brittany said. What about cooking? Jessica screwed up her face in thought and then started typing. Brittany leaned over and watched. Oh, basic cooking commands. Good thinking. It's something we'll have to do later, but I figured we should put it on the list. Jessica sat back. Okay, well, I should probably start coding for Rosie to pick up the girls and put them in her belly. Then I'll do the commands for getting things and bringing them to us. She started typing. Brittany pointed at the computer screen. I think you got that backward. Isn't that the code for the kids, not the adults? Jessica looked and shook her head. Good eye. Sorry, blunt moment. They looked at each other and laughed. Jessica returned to typing. The programming was a lot harder than she thought it would be, and after an hour or so, her eyes were tired. She reached up and rubbed the back of her neck and shrugged her shoulders toward her ears. I'd offer to take over for a while, Brittany said, but you know I totally suck at programming. Jessica nodded. It's okay. Brittany shoved her, her chair back. But I could rub your shoulders for you. Jessica smiled. That'd be great. Thanks. Brittany affected a British lady's maid accent. You're welcome, my lady. She started rubbing Jessica's shoulders, then she stopped. We should have Rosie call us milady. Jessica grinned. That's a great idea. She squinted at the screen and started typing. Jessica worked on Rosie's code for three more hours. It was after midnight when she typed in the last of the code and sat back. Okay, she said. If we did this right, these commands should have been downloading into Rosie as we created them. All we need to do now is disconnect her, unplug her from the wall, and activate her. Unplugging her computer. Jessica looked at Rosie's control panel. She's fully charged. I think if we activate her now, she'll be good to go in the morning. Then she can go grab Cindy and Mindy when they get here for their early workshop time. We'll have to be sure we get here on time so we can see that, Brittany said. She looked at her gold watch. We won't have much time for beauty sleep. We don't need much beauty sleep, Jessica said. They laughed. In perfect synchronized motion, they both got out, of their, out their lip gloss and freshened up their lips, then stood up from the table. Go ahead and activate her, Jessica said to Brittany. Brittany grinned and reached behind Rosie's neck. She flipped a switch. As soon, as soon as she did, the cover to Rosie's control panel closed. With a click and a whir, Rosie blinked her eyes. Her head swiveled this way and that. Her gaze landed on Jessica. She blinked again and turned to look at Brittany. Another click sounded from inside Rosie and she rose up off the cart. Once she was off the cart, she stood, she stood still looking at Brittany. What's she doing? Brittany asked. Jessica shook her head. Maybe she's just getting ready. She shoved her laptop back into her backpack and started to zip up the pack. Before Jessica could close her backpack, Rosie reached out and grabbed Brittany by her shoulders. Brittany screamed, Ow! What's she doing? Jessica turned toward Rosie and her friend and she stared in disbelief. Rosie's pink hands were full on clamped down on Brittany's right bicep. Brittany tried to wrench herself free of Rosie's grasp. But that just resulted in Rosie's metal fingers, padded only slightly by her f pink felt, digging in deeper. They cut through Brittany's bare skin, drawing blood. Oh my god. Jessica watched in horror as the blood trickled down to Brittany's elbow and dripped onto her shirt. Brittany cried out, Jessica, do something! Brittany tried to reach with her free arm to deactivate Rosie, but before she could, Rosie's hydraulic-driven strength yanked Brittany off her feet and twirled her upside down. Rosie's belly access door dropped open with a hiss, and Rosie lifted Brittany out and away from her belly, so Brittany was hovering in the air, parallel to the floor. While Jessica was trying to figure out why Rosie was performing what looked like an acrobatic move, she hadn't programmed that. Rosie began shoving Brittany through the access door and into Rosie's belly. Stop it! Jessica screamed at Rosie. She grabbed Brittany around the waist and tried to pull her out of the animatronic pig's grasp. What had gone wrong? What was Rosie putting Brittany inside her stomach cavity? Or why was Rosie putting Brittany inside her stomach cavity? Jessica had just seconds to think of these questions before Brittany screamed again. Putting aside her confusion and disbelief, Jessica yanked harder. Brittany's screams became shriller, but otherwise Jessica's efforts had no effect. Rosie was relentlessly stuffing Brittany into her stomach. 
Jessica couldn't, couldn't stop it. Brittany went into the belly cavity feet first, and she didn't go quietly or easily. Kicking her legs madly, Brittany shrieked at the top of her lungs as she was stuffed into o Rosie's open stomach. Whoa! Between shrill screams, Brittany yelled, Turn her off! Turn her off! I have an idea. I have an idea for a theory. And I'm going to say it right now. I'm going to say it right now. What if... What if... Because... I, I personally think that the fun time animatronics may have been some of the first animatronics. Uh, that, that was also based off of like the Faz facts, right? Because William Afton uh, built some of the first animatronics, etc. Uh, and I, I think the fun times were some of the first animatronics. What if the fun times are made, are, are springlock animatronics? What if they're springlock animatronics? And um, because like they, they have. Th because in this, Rosie has a has like a chest cavity, uh, and and she's a springlock suit, and I feel like this is a massive parallel to like to like Baby or Funtime Freddy, for example. So what if this story is trying to tell us that the sister location animatronics are springlock suits, just like the springlock suit that we see in Night Four in Sister Location? Oh, what if that is it? I feel like that might be it. Wow. Okay. Well, we'll have to read further to see if it is more of a uh, sister location kind of, kind of esque um, story. Jessica let go of Brittany's waist and tried grabbing Brittany's shoulders, but obviously Brittany wasn't thinking clearly, and she squirmed wildly. Jessica finally managed to get a grip on Brittany's upper arms, but she was no match for Rosie's strength. So Jessica tried to do what Brittany was now chanting. Turn her off! Turn her off! Turn her off! Jessica couldn't reach Rosie's control panel. Brittany's struggling torso and Ro um, Rosie's relentless grasp blocked the way. Jessica ran around behind Rosie so she could get to the switch from the other side of the pig. Brittany kept screaming and fighting. Just hang on! Just... T I'll turn her off! Jessica shouted. Jessica reached for the pig's activation switch, but Rosie was significantly taller than the petite teen. Even on tiptoes, Jessica couldn't reach Rosie's neck. Leaping to try to switch the, reach the switch, Jessica failed again. She tried twice more, and finally she stopped leaping and instead grabbed the chair. As she dragged the chair over to position it behind Rosie's back, Jessica realised that Rosie had let go of Brittany's arms. She saw Brittany twist to try to pull herself out through the open access door. But not only did her body impede her reach, as soon as Rosie let go of Brittany's shoulders, Rosie got a grip on Brittany's head, shoving her fingers through Brittany, Brittany's tidy, slicked black hair. Uh, Rosie clamped down on Brittany's skull. Brittany's eyes goggled. They swiveled this way and that, looking for escape. Seeing Jessica, she gave her friend a beseeching look. Brittany's face was covered in sweat. In cheerleading practice, they always joked about how cheerleaders never perspired. They glowed. Well, Brittany's face wasn't glowing. It was wet with desperate sweat. Before Jessica could say anything to Brittany to reassure her, uh, Rosie shoved Brittany's head inside the summer carroty. Brittany tried to turn and reach for the doorway, but before she could, it slammed shut with a sucking shh. It was sealed. Jessica stared, her mouth hanging open. She then clamped a hand over her mouth. Her friend was trapped inside Rosy Porkchop. Brittany? Brit? Can you hear me? Jessica shouted. For an instant, the room was silent. Jessica realised her heart was pounding so hard that it felt like the rapid fire beats were thrumming in her ears. Then, past the pounding beat in her head, she heard Brittany's muffled wail. Get me out of here! I'm trying. Jessica yelled. Just hold on! Jessica finished positioning the chair and climbed up on top, on top of it. Brittany kept crying out and yelling. Most of what she shouted was incomprehensible, but Jessica didn't need to understand her friend's words to get her meaning. Brittany was terrified, and she wanted out of the pig. Even a moron could figure that out, and Jessica wasn't a moron. She wished Brittany would shut up so that she could concentrate, but she understood why Brittany kept yelling. Jessica would have been yelling too if she was stuck inside that thing. I'm working on deactivating Rosie, Jessica shouted. It would help if you would just be so quiet for a few seconds. I know you're scared, but your screaming is like freaking me out. A couple seconds of silence passed. 
Then Brittany shrieked, Being in here is freaking me out. Jessica, in spite of the situation, couldn't help but smile. Leave it to Brittany to be funny in a situation like this. You'll be out in a few seconds, Jessica shouted to Brittany. Jessica concentrated on reaching Rosie's controls. Even on the chair, the control box was hard to reach, but Jessica was finally able to flip the cover open. After she got it open, though, she could tell that the buttons and levers were at an angle that hid them from her view. She would have to go by feel. Reaching, she sought the controls she knew were there. From inside Rosie, Brittany shouted, How much longer? Her voice was even higher than ever, and it had a catch in it. Jessica was sure Brittany was crying. That's enough of that, Jessica told Rosie. Jessica fumbled around, seeking the right button. Instead of a button, though, her fingers activated a toggle switch. Rosie Porkjop jolted so violently that she backed into Jessica's chair and tipped it over. Jessica tumbled to the ground, turning her ankle and whacking her head on the edge of a nearby table. Crap, she snapped, rubbing her head. Then she turned to look at Rosie. She blinked in confusion. Rosie was convulsing. And from inside Rosie, Brittany let out a sound that Jessica had never heard before and never wanted to hear again. It sounded like a cross between a howl and a screech. It was loud. It didn't sound muffled at all. And it was quite clearly the sound of excruciating pain. The only other time Jessica had heard a sound like that was when her neighbour's cat had been run over by a lawnmower. Imagine mowing, imagine mowing your cat, oh god. Uh, before Jessica could even react to her friend's cries, they stopped. Rosie was perfectly still. Oh my god, Jessica shouted, struggling to her feet. Brittany, can you hear me? Jessica started to pant in total panic. What had happened to Brittany? Rosie went still. Jessica repositioned the chair so she could get a better look at Rosie's control panel. What switch has, had she flipped? Oh no, she flipped to the... No, 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 no. She flipped to the, um... To the spring lock mode, to, the, to the, uh, the animatronic mode, didn't she? I bet she did. Rosie went still. Jessica repositioned the chair so she could get a better, better look at Rosie's control panel. Which, which switch had she flipped? Jessica peered at the controls. Oh, she had flipped the mode switch from suit to animatronic Oh my god! Sorry, she muttered. She quickly flipped the switch back to suit. As soon as the switch was moved, Rosie's belly access door op popped open. Yes! Jessica punched the air. She rushed around to help her friend out of the animatronic pig. When she stepped to the belly side of the pig, the first thing Jessica noticed was that the interior of the access door wasn't the silver grey it had been when she last seen it. It also wasn't dry. It was... Is, is that... Blood? As Jessica watched, a thick red drop detached from the edge of the door and plopped onto the grey rubber flooring. She gaped at it. The hairs on the back of her neck stood up. Her brain was suddenly sluggish. She was having trouble processing what the blood meant. The blood and the fact that Brittany wasn't clambering to get out of the pig was telling her something. Something she didn't want to know. Jessica blinked, then leaned toward the door ready to help Brittany get out. Brittany! <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Jessica tried to see inside Rosie, but she couldn't. She could, however, see a scrap of denim stuck on a gear near the door cover. A bloody scrap. Jessica cried out and stood, shoving back the chair as she did. In the minutes that followed, she'd have a few co 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 seconds in which she wondered if her sudden movement was what reactivated Rosie. Would Rosie have remained dormant if Jessica just sat there silently until help came? Would Rosie have stayed frozen if Jessica had slung off the chair and retreated slowly, stealthily, out of the classroom? She'd never know, because that's not what she did. She made a loud noise, and she moved suddenly. Rosie's reaction was instantaneous. She reached out, and she grabbed Jessica by the shoulders. In an identical move to the one she used on Brittany, Rosie flipped Jessica upside down and then lifted her into a position parallel to the floor. Je Jessica screamed and then started flailing around. She pounded on the pig's hands. Let me go, Jessica shrieked. Then she just started crying out for help. Help me, she screamed at the top of her lungs, even though she knew she was alone. When she realised how futile that was, she bellowed at Rosie. Stop it! This was just as ineffective. 
As Jessica fought against Rosie, part of her mind, the part that was still capable of logical thought, tried to figure out what she had done to make the pig grab Brittany and now her. How had she gotten the programming so wrong? As soon as she asked the question, the answer arrived on a fleeting second of lucidity. She'd been typing in the name codes when they'd seen the robotic rat. Right in the middle of that process, Jessica had left what she was doing. When she'd gone back to the computer, she must have flipped the codes. She'd gotten the commands reversed. Whatever she'd programmed Rosie to do to Cindy and Mindy, Rosie would do to Jessica and Brittany, and Jessica and Brittany would be forced to serve Cindy and Mindy. Why hadn't she double-checked her work? Brittany had suggested proofreading, but Jessica hadn't listened to her. Jessica had been lazy, and given that scrap of bloody denim and the complete lack of sound from Brittany, she was pretty sure her laziness had gotten her friend killed. Was the same thing going to happen to Jessica? I hope so. <laughs> she, she resumed fighting the pig for all she was worth, and still she wasn't strong enough to break out of Rosie's grasp, but she had to keep trying. Jessica started screaming, shrieking, wailing, howling, kicking and punching. Whatever rem remnants of poise and grace yet Jessica used to have unraveled with every cater wall and every primal motion she made, Jess Jessica's presence was a thing of the past. But none of that mattered. In spite of all her resistance, Jessica could feel her body slipping again uh, inside Rosie's. The rough edges of the belly access door scraped her hips and then her chest before rasping against her writhing shoulders. This could not be happening. As Jessica was crammed into Rosie's belly, she, dis she tried to grab onto Rosie's interior, hoping it would stop her progress, uh, forward progress. When she did, though, her hand slipped off slimy wetness. Jessica gagged and scrabbled for something to grasp. Something that would help her disengage from Rosie's determined clench. But her hands couldn't find anything to help her. They just found more squishy warmth. And that now reminded her... Uh, that now reminded of her friend. Jessica stopped using her hands to find a way to get free. Instead, she took she tried to look out through the opening of Rosie's belly. All she could see, because she was face up, was Rosie's arms and her fiberglass squares of the classroom's ceiling. The bright fluorescent lights shone in her eyes, and she closed them. She opened her mouth and screamed again. Maybe a custodian was around, working late. Not likely, but possible. If there was a chance anyone was close by, Jessica had to keep screaming. So she did. No one came to help. Just as Rosie had done with Brittany, she was now she now clamped her hand onto the crown of Jessica's head. She steadily shoved Jessica's head inside the open belly. Jessica noticed that the brightness against her eyelids was disappearing. She opened her eyes just in time to see that her head was passing through the opening of Rosie's belly. Just a couple more inches and her head would be entirely inside. Jessica gulped in air and shrieked louder than ever she ever had in her life. It didn't do any good. Rosie gave Jessica one final shove, and Jessica felt the top of her head rubbing on the access door opening. She turned her head to try to see out through the opening, and that's when she saw. Jessica shrieked again and retched. She closed her eyes tight, trying not to let her brain replay what she'd seen. Brittany wasn't even remotely Brittany anymore. She was just a churned up mass of skin, locks of browned hair, uh, bits of bone, nauseatingly gleaming white tissue, and chunks of minced organs. It looked like Brittany had been pulverised and smeared all over the inside of Rosie's belly. What was left of Brittany was entangled in Rosie's mechanisms, the gears and prongs and rods that were now drawn back against the, the walls of Rosie's stomach. Jessica forced herself to open her eyes, and as soon as she did, she thought she could see jagged shards that her brain told her with pieces of Brittany's bones. She refused to listen to her brain. She couldn't. If she let herself actually acknowledge that she was being crammed into a lethal chamber that had already chewed up her friend, she would lose what was left of her mind. She had to stay focused if she was going to figure out a way to get free. Jessica swallowed down bile, gritted her teeth and started feeling around the interior of Rosie's belly. There had to be some mechanism that would free her. No matter how much she, she searched though, Jessica's groping fingers found little besides gross, stomach-churning wet sponginess. At one point, she closed her fist around what she knew instantaneously was a piece of Brittany's intestines. 
As soon as the pulpy mass collapsed in her fingers, Rosie's interior was filled with an abominable smell, worse than any nastiest, uh, nastiness some skank might have left in a public toilet. Je Jessica's stomach flipped over in a dry heave. She opened her hand, shifted it, and tried again. This time, she got a hold of one of the sharp rods that were a part of Rosie's hydraulic system. She felt blood trickle from her knuckle and wind its way down the back of her hand. Was that her own blood? Was it Brittany's? Did it matter? Thinking she might find something if she shifted her body, Jessica rotated to her left. Immediately, her continued shrieks crescendoed into high decibel, glass-breaking frequencies. Plastered to the other side of the animatronic stomach was Brittany's face, looking like it had been peeled from her head and hung on one of the prongs that was now retracted against the inner wall. Oh, sheesh. Still retaining its form with it, and with its bright blue eyes still in their sockets, Brittany's face was a grisly mask. Wow. The mask was bloody at the edges, but otherwise it looked unscathed by the destruction. Rosie's systems had reeked on uh, Brittany's body. Brittany's irises were where they should have been. Her nose held its proper shape, and her new lip gloss, bizarrely, was still in place. Jessica gaped at the face, unable to look away, until the belly access door slammed shut with a very final, very loud whoosh and reverberating clank. Then, all she could see was darkness. Jessica's shriek caught in her throat and she, sh and she started to choke. Or was that something else in her throat? Oh god, it was. Something had dripped off of Rosie's mechanisms and fallen down inside Jessica's mouth. It tasted like Jessica threw her head back and forth and spit as hard as she could. She tasted something coppery and salty. Jessica spit some more and tried to move her hand up to wipe out her mouth. At first, her hand got stuck between her chest and a gear, but she got it loose and wiped her palm on her tongue. She felt her stomach royal. She was pretty sure she just swallowed a piece of Brittany's skin. She remembered how sweaty Brittany had looked when she disappeared into Rosie's belly. If her face had been pers perspiring, uh, the rest of her had been too. Jessica thought she'd just tasted blood and sweat. Jessica? Jessica, Jessica's face rose, oh, Jessica rose, sorry, I don't know why it's her face. Hello, is anybody out there? I'm inside here, inside the pig, get me out of here. She tried, it, she tried to pound on the insides of Rosie's belly, but she again encountered gears and rods. And she also, yet again, felt way too many of Brittany's squidgy body parts. She stilled her hands and listened. Help me, Jessica, the voice said. Help her? What stupid girl wanted Jessica's help? It was Jessica who needed the help. Jessica opened her mouth to yell at whoever was talking. But then she stopped. Wait a second, she thought. That voice. It hadn't come from outside Rosie. It had come from... Jessica, I think we might have screwed up, the voice said. Jessica's breathing caught. It was Brittany. That was Brittany's voice. She... she wasn't dead? How is that possible? Brit... Jessica whispered. Jessica, Brittany answered. I'm glad you're here. I'm cold. She wasn't dead? How is she not dead? Jessica hadn't taken an inventory of Brittany's parts. She tried not to look at the gut-churning gruesomeness very much at all, but she was pretty sure she'd seen nothing but small annihilated pieces of human flesh, bone and tissue inside the animatronic pig, that and the peeled off face. There was no way Brittany could be alive. No way, Jessica said out loud. For sure, right? Brittany said. Jessica shifted her hips to try to stop a rod from pressing against her foot. She made herself breathe in and out evenly through her mouth. She wasn't going to use her nose again inside this abattoir. Okay, so if Brittany was dead, then why was she hearing Brittany's voice? Just as Jessica had thought, she heard a click. She sucked in her breath. The switch. No, no, not the, not the, in the briefest of instants. Jessica went from thought to nothing but sensation, and the sensation was worse than any pain imaginable. Every nerve ending in her body registered a catastrophic, lethal attack, and then nothing. Jessica, Jessica's consciousness was only darkness, no poise, no grace, no presence. 
No royalty here. Nothing but blackness. Mindy and Cindy trotted toward the door of the robotics classroom. They were a few minutes early, as they usually were. They couldn't wait to show the class later today what they'd done with the dog animatronic that Mr Thornton had assigned them uh, to in the sophomore class. Mindy knew Mr Thornton would let them stand up and talk about it. They were both happy to do that. Both Mindy and Cindy wore red today. It was a total accident. Mindy had on her favourite cordurary cordu jumper. I, I don't know how to say that word. With a red and yellow frilly blouse. blouse. Cindy wore a new red dress her mum had bought her at the, at the mall the night before. It had poofy sleeves, which Cindy had shown off to Mindy when Cindy's mum picked Mindy up to drive them both to school. Totally mag, Mindy had said. She and Cindy weren't too up on... Yeah, she and Cindy weren't too up on high school slang. That must have been one of the reasons they didn't fit in. It didn't matter. They didn't care if they fit in. Mindy pushed on the door to the robotics classroom, but it wouldn't budge. Something was wedged up against it. On the count of three, Cindy asked, turning to her friend. Mindy nodded. One, two, three. The friends heaved their full weight against the door, and it skidded open. A table was in front of it, as though someone had barricaded themselves in. But the room was, as they'd expected it to be, empty. Well, almost empty. When they entered the room, the first thing Mindy and Cindy saw was Rosie Porkchop. The animatronic pig stood a few feet from the door, watching them with a happy smile. The pig's curly tail whirled in a spiral. Hi, Rosie, Mindy said. Rosie raised her right arm. Both girls stared at her. Uh, Cindy tilted her head. I think she wants to give you her... I think she wants you to give her a high five. Mindy laughed and slapped the pig's hand. Rosie stood, spun in a circle, bowed, then said, Hello, Mindy. Ha. Huh. Mindy raised her eyebrows. How does she know your name? Cindy asked. Mindy shook her head. I don't know. She looked around. Do you think Mr Thornton programmed her with all of our names? Shifting the animatronic dog that she held, she poked Cindy. You try saying hello. Cindy shrugged. Hi, Rosie. She sneezed. Hi, Cindy. Gesundheit. Cindy laughed. Rosie's voice sounded familiar to Mindy. Why? Hey, Cindy said. Doesn't the sound... Doesn't she sound a little bit like that mean girl? She pulled the tissue from her pocket and blew her nose. Which one? Mindy asked. She and Cindy hadn't counted more than a few mean girls in this school. Mindy didn't understand at all why people picked on them just for being younger. For that matter, she had no idea why a person's appearance separated them from a certain social circle. People were people. Kids were kids. What was the problem? The one who's going to be homecoming queen, Cindy said. Brittany? She wiped her nose and crumpled up the tissue. Oh, that one. No, the queen is Jessica. The princess is Brittany. Cindy nodded and her red curls bobbled around her freckled cheeks. Mindy looked at Rosie. Did Rosie sound like Jessica? She decided to see if Rosie would say something else. What are you doing here, Rosie? She asked. I'm here to serve you and Cindy. Rosie said in Jessica's smooth timber. Or timbre. <laughs> wow, Mindy grinned. She turned to Cindy. You're right, it, it is her voice. Cindy nodded. She stepped up in front of Rosie's eager face. What do you mean by serve us? Cindy asked the animatronic pig. Rosie did an awkward little shuffle, then bowed. I am your ladies in waiting. I will treat you like queens. I will do whatever you want me to do to help you and make your life easy. Just tell me what you need, please. Ladies? Mindy repeated. There's just one of you. I am your ladies in waiting. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Rosie repeated. Whoever programmed her needs a lesson in grammar, Cindy said. Mindy laughed. Queens, huh? She giggled. Rosie nodded. Yes, you are queens. You deserve the best. I can't argue with that, Mindy said. Can you, Cindy? Cindy shook her head. She held out her backpack. Can you carry this for me? Rosie nodded happily and took the backpack from Cindy's outstretched hands. She turned toward Mindy. Milady, may I have yours too? Hey, there's the milady. Mindy snorted. Milady, that's hilarious. She gazed at Rosie. Rosie smiled her fixed smile back at her, waiting patiently. Mindy shrugged. Okay, this is getting kind of heavy. She handed the animatronic dog to Rosie. Rosie took it easily. I can handle my own backpack, Mindy said. As you wish it to be.
Rosie said. Cindy laughed and did a little happy dance. This is the coolest thing ever. She sneezed again. Gesundheit, Rosie said again. Cindy grinned. I love that. She took out another tissue and honked into it. As she wiped her nose, Cindy looked down. She frowned at the ground. Is that? She pointed at the floor and Mindy followed the direction of her finger. She saw a drop of something thick and red. Must be paint, Mindy said. Mindy grabbed her, free, her friend's free hand. Together they skipped to the front of the robotics classroom, with Rosie trotting along at their heels. Mr Thornton strode into the classroom as Mindy and Cindy took their seats, and Rosie Porkchop set Cindy's backpack and the girl's animatronic on the table in front of them and sat down. Mr Thornton paused and raised an eyebrow at the pig. He looked from the pig to Mindy and Cindy and then back to the pig. Did you and, and the other team... Um, Jessica and Brittany trade projects for some. Mindy and Cindy exchanged a glance. Yes, Mindy said quickly. I hope you don't mind. Mr Thornton shrugged. I can't argue with the results you got with... He nodded. Well done, girls, he said. You've tamed the monster, but let me check something. He knelt next to Rosie's neck and flipped a switch. Nothing happened. He reached under her belly, felt around, then gave a tug. Nothing happened. He straightened. Good. Apparently it's been deactivated. What house? Mindy asked. Mr Thornton waved a hand as if the topic was not important. Oh, I saw an article last night about the old Springlock suits. Part animatronics and part costume for... He pointed at Rosie Porkchop. This was one of them. They were taken out of commission because they were deemed to be dangerous for use by... Apparently sometimes these old animatronics switch modes automatically because of a glitch in the programming. So... He patted Rosie's big pink head. It's so annoying that he, he doesn't finish his sentences. It's so unsatisfying. I knew that the writers did that so that we wouldn't get we would get limited information. But she seems safe right now and clearly you've done a great job reprogramming her. Mindy and Cindy exchanged looks, then smiled at Mr. Thornton. Mindy grinned when Rosie reached an extension of her front foot into Mindy's backpack and pulled out her notepad. Thanks, Rosie, Mindy churred. Inside Rosie, fused with the interlocking metal structure of the machine's mechanisms, two lifeless, disembodied faces stared at each other. Oh my god! Although the lips on both faces had perfectly applied shiny lip gloss, the mouths guarded by that gloss would never speak again. The two faces would stare at each other in perpetual silence, their features locked in contorted expressions of horrified understanding. Yo! <laughs> that, that is a beautiful ending. That's, that's, that's beautiful. That was a very good story. I like that a lot. Uh, okay. Well, actually, now that I've read all three stories, I have to say Friendly Phase is undeniably the best book in the series so far. Genuinely, uh, I, I really hope that uh, the prankster could top it, and, and I reckon it probably could too. But um, but this was this all around was amazing stories. Like it was one amazing story after the other after the other. Um, this story in particular, it it might be my favorite of the three. I don't know. I I think Friendly Face was incredible. Actually, yeah, I think Friendly Face was probably my favorite. But this was so good, and in terms of theories, like, okay, let's let's talk about theories in a minute, but this ending, like, this last paragraph might be one of my favourite ending paragraphs of all, of all Fast by Fright stories, like, that's, that last bit is inc incredible, I love the detail of the shiny lip gloss, it's kind of just rubbing it in, that they deserved this, like, they, they properly deserved this, and that's also something that I want to talk about, because, like, the, uh, hopefully you've read Sea Bonnies, but the person in Sea Bonnies didn't deserve what they got. They, they did not deserve what they, they, what they got in the end. But in this, they definitely deserved it. They, a hundred percent, they were just the worst people on, on this, on the face of this earth. Um, okay. Theories. Clearly, this is going to get a lot of praise for Golden Duo, which I actually believe. So that's good for me, I guess. Uh, I, I believe Golden Duo. Uh, and I think this is defining proof that you can have two two people con controlling one animatronic. 
Um, yeah, no, I, I think, I definitely think it is to do with Golden Duo. Uh, law significance, I would say that's the only real law significance. We, we saw Evan before. But I don't really know if that's that means anything, or if it's just a, a name, like an easter egg name, that keeps appearing or something. I don't know. I, I definitely think it's evidence for Golden Duo, and I really, really like the story. It's great. It's The Springlocks uh, is a great idea. This is amazing. Um, so yeah. Thank you guys so much for reading with me. Guys, you may think the friendly face is over, but it's not. We still have this to go we have the epilogue and guys it's the longest epilogue we've ever had so it's gonna be a good one and uh i will see you in that i cannot wait to to read it uh so yeah i will see you later goodbye